Terrence, thank you so much for speaking with the Nocturnal today. We're going to jump right into it. Tell me about Cutthroat City and what inspired you to take on this role. Cutthroat City is about, uh, it's, it happens post- it's almost post-apocalyptic, you know. It happens right after, um, right after Katrina rode through and reset the foundations of um, society there, and a group of young individuals try to take advantage of the disarray and all of those things, and they make a lot of choices that some of which aren't beneficial. And then there's the people that were maintaining the order or disorder of it that has to now confront and deal with these young individuals. Um, it, it really shows, you know, the depravity of humanity, but also the humanity that they find themselves find within themselves throughout that depravity. Okay. And what made me join onto the thing, the main reason I came on was RZA, you know, uh, I've known him for years as a, as a human being, you know, I love his spirit, but um, as a creative being, I'm in awe of a lot of the choices that he makes and the things that he come up with, like even while we were shooting the film, uh, I had an idea of how to shoot a particular scene and he had something written already. Well, he shot it both ways. Hmm. And literally allowed, the, and which took an extra two, three hours, but he was still willing to shoot it both ways. And so his collaborative style really makes a difference for working with people who have ideas or other creatives. You know, he, he doesn't have to be the biggest person in the room. That's incredible. And I have to ask with your character, the saint, he's really interesting, a little quirky um, with some of his behaviors, especially with them. Um, praying to some of those images right there. Was that something that was from you, from RZA, from other inspiration? That was all from RZA. He wanted the character, you know, to be grounded in principles and to be grounded in spirituality. And just like he, the way he, I think he explained it was, um, you know, God and well, the, the Christ and his four horsemen hmm. you know, come to reap destruction. All of these individuals, you know, they're coming to to wipe out humanity. You know, they are a gift from the Creator. You know, the God God is actually bringing condemnation upon mankind, and Pope is one of those esquires of the horsemen. That's how he put it to me. To where you know, there's always devotion. There was a matter, a means to maintaining balance between what we were doing and um, what had to be done. And this one has a long list of just incredible actors, some who have been in the game for a while and some who are new. I mean, what yeah. was it like working with this next generation of evolving um, actors who are, you know, very young, just like myself? It was, it was painful at times, just because you start seeing that every one of us is op can become obsolete. For every great actor that think, that thinks they're a good actor, every good actor that thinks they're a great actor, there is a hundred new actors that pop on the scene every day that's just as capable as they are. And they have even greater information and greater ability to accomplish what they want because they've been able to watch you. Like I was able to watch Sidney Poitier. I was able to watch Lawrence Fishburne. I was able to watch Clarence Williams III. I was able to watch Denzel and learn from the things that all of them did and, and build my body of work, you know, which I would love to say it's completely devoid of any of their um, their their impressions, but no, I, I'm a, I, I am the accumulated knowledge of everyone up until my time. And this next generation, they have even a greater amount of accumulated knowledge. So it was painful because you are basically watching who will one day replace you. But then it was gratifying because you know that this this fight to for the arts will still be represented by strong young black people and um, that was really heartwarming that's fantastic and i think through this film there is this elephant in the room which is just the backdrop of hurricane katrina uh yeah. what was it like to shoot in that city almost two decades after that devastation yeah it was it, that, that was frightening mainly because of um 
there's so many parts of the city that has never recovered from all of the things that took place with them. And then there's the other side of the, of, of the infrastructure of, of certain things in the city. You know, you go in certain areas and you smell the gasoline, you smell the sewage, you smell them pumping out oil and this saturates the air and you, you feel as if you're going to have some type of um, respiratory issues or some kind of biological responses to this and the fact that people are still living in these cities, that a city that really is supposed to be underwater, yeah. that they might have to give in to nature and let nature reclaim that that land because nature is trying to and the earth needs its own balance but you know i'm 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 more of a person that that believes in letting the earth be what it needs to be mm -hmm. even if it means it's got to tear my house down i'd rather move inland because ultimately it's going to be more beneficial for me if all the people from new orleans moved a little more north you know, and allow that land to become the swamp land it's supposed to be, perhaps here to be a little cooler than it is, you know. It's a lot of resistance and mankind seems to be fighting that in every way, but that's what I saw down there. I saw I saw the struggle between humanity and the earth and that needs to stop because humanity will not win. I absolutely agree with that because, you know, I have family who live down there. So every time I'm down there, I kind of feel the same way. It's just, you know, it's, it's a interesting city and a very strange place to be honest but um i guess uh with um with your career <laughs> in general i mean you've played so many iconic characters from empire to hustle and flow some of my favorites um where do you see your next um i guess your next position going in terms of just your acting career well acting wise that's more of um now i i act because it pays the bills and half <laughs> You know, but uh, I like the idea of education and teaching mm. the, the younger, uh, this, this new uh, wave of people coming in. You get to a point where you can ride a horse, but there's a young person that can ride that horse. And I would love to, you know, to assist as a director, as a, you know, as a producer and, and help nurture and, and build these young talents into the stars they were meant to be. It's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, with this film too, just in general, there's so many genres that are just interface, especially <laughs> with what's happening with um, with uh, with Katrina, with race relations, and then today, I mean, look how we're kind of still coping with it today. What do you think that viewers will take away from such a strong film like this? Well, I think they'll see the tragedy and people not taking advantage of their moral compass, of people allowing their moral compass to go awry and thinking that there will be no consequences from that. Hopefully it'll stand as a signpost to say, wait a minute, think about the choices you're gonna make because everything has its consequences. If you were to talk to someone who is skeptical about seeing this film, who has no idea about it, what would you say that would make them wanna see this film? give them the disclaimer that some of the scenes and the issues that, that are um, explored in this um, are pretty graphic. Some of the things will, will, will shake, you know, your moral center, um, but it shakes it for the right reason. Rizzo, when he put this film together, he put it together with the hopes of informing the public and informing, informing our own people, you know, mm -hmm that the ways in which we're behaving is not going to end up being fruitful. And we see that with T.I.'s role and how hard he fights to, uh, to get some balance. And at the end, you know, the bill comes due and it's a painful bill. Well, I'm still taken aback by so many scenes, uh, especially the raccoon one, but we don't have to even go there. Um, but Terrence, thank you so much for speaking with The Nocturnal today. Cutthroat City, it's such a must-see film. Thank you again. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You too, dear. Bye-bye.